Hello and welcome to the step-by-step -step assembly instructional video of Watney, an open-source, 3D-printed, Raspberry Pi-powered telepresence rover. Before we begin, please go to this project's GitHub page and make sure you review the bill of materials, firmware update instructions for your UPS, and general 3D printing instructions. Once you have acquired the electronic parts and have printed the plastic ones, you're ready to begin the assembly. You will need the following components to assemble your Watney. A Raspberry Pi 3A+, a UPS power supply, two 18650 batteries, an audio amplifier, a 40mm speaker, a microphone, a servo motor, a wide-angle camera, a dual-channel motor controller, four geared motors, an LED strip, jumper wire, various USB connectors, four Keystone 209 contacts, and a set of M3 bolts. To wire this all together, we'll use the following diagrams. We'll come back to each one during detailed assembly later in the video. Feel free to pause on each one so you can see each component's wiring. And if this doesn't make sense to you, don't worry, we'll go step by step later in the video. Once you have all your plastic parts printed out, here's how we'll turn them into a functional rover. Note that this is not the most optimal order of assembly, but it should give you an idea of how the parts fit together. I couldn't find CAD models for several parts, so you're gonna have to use your imagination for those. The motors get attached to the base as shown. The power supply, the batteries, and the Raspberry Pi are mounted towards the back of the base. Two keystone connectors are mounted in the front to make contact with the charging dock and connect to the power supply's charging port. The component panel attaches to the Raspberry Pi and houses the amplifier and the motor controller. There are also wiring channels to keep your wiring tidy. Then in the front, we'll have the LED strip functioning as headlights and a camera bucket for the articulating camera. To move the camera up and down, we'll install the servo in the back to which we'll attach a spur gear. The camera itself will freely pivot on one end and have a matching spur gear on the other. The microphone is attached to the housing, which in turn is attached to the cover. We'll also attach the speaker to the cover as well. To finish up, we'll mount the tires onto the wheels and press fit them or glue them to the motor shafts. Now that you have a rough idea of what the assembly looks like, let's go through it step by step. We'll start by putting together the component board with the motor controller and the amplifier. The amplifier should look like this once you solder the headers and the screw terminals. If you want the absolute maximum loudness from it, you can solder a 100 kilo ohm resistor between the ground and the gain pin as shown here. Otherwise, you can connect the gain pin to ground as shown in the diagram. It will be plenty loud even without the resistor. Next up, let's solder the motor controller. We'll use the header pins on the input side, screw terminals for the output pins, and a single header pin on the enabled pin, marked on the board as EEP, and leaving the ULT pin disconnected. While you have your soldering iron out, let's solder the two USB connectors to plug into the power supply. Since only ground and voltage pins are hooked up, we'll join them together with their adjacent pins so we'll have four voltage and four ground pins from the two connectors. Now let's put the component board together. Put the amplifier and the motor controller in their slots, put the clamp over them and use 8mm bolts to secure the clamp to the sides. Don't over tighten the bolts, you only need them tight enough to keep the components from coming loose. Use a 12mm bolt to secure the middle of the clamp to the standoff. Next, take your power supply with attached standoffs and place the Raspberry Pi over the standoffs as shown, making sure to line up the power supply pogo pins with Raspberry Pi GPIO pins in the back, and put the 2.5mm nuts on two of the standoffs. Make sure you don't have the batteries inserted yet. Place the component board over the two other standoffs and once it's in place, secure it with 2.5mm nuts as well. Take the two USB connectors and plug them into the power supply, 
once again making sure that the batteries have not yet been put in. If you've soldered the connectors correctly, the pins should be facing up, same as the pins on your other components. Now's a good time to see if our amplifier is working correctly. First, solder about 25 centimeters of wire to the terminals of the speaker and insert them into the matching screw terminals of the amp. Then, following the audio wiring diagram, connect the amplifier's header pins to the Raspberry Pi. We will redo the wiring later when we add the microphone, so don't worry about keeping the wiring neat. Be sure to double check that you're not reversing the voltage and the ground pins. Doing so will definitely fry your amplifier. Trust me, I found out the hard way. When you're done, put the batteries into the power supply, press the power button, wait for the Pi to boot up, and hopefully you'll hear... Lottie online. Now that we got that out of the way, let's proceed with assembling the base parts. Take an 8mm bolt and drive it into the mounting hole in front of the base. Then take the keystone connectors and attach them to the contact board, so when you attach it to the base, the flexible part of the contact would face towards the front. Solder about 150mm of wire to each of the contacts and solder the other ends to the micro USB mail connector as shown in the diagram. Place the contact board in the slot in the front and attach it with the bolt. Now onto the motors. You'll connect each side of the motors in parallel. Rear motors need about 160-170mm of wire, while the front ones need about 100mm. Connect each pair of wires in parallel and connect the other ends to the motors. Make sure you don't reverse the connection, you want the motors to spin in the same direction. Place the motors as shown here and then repeat this step for the other pair of motors. Take the power button and insert it into the slot on the side. It should be able to freely move in the slot. Now take your Raspberry Pi assembly with the batteries inserted and carefully place it into the base making sure not to pinch any wires. Be careful not to touch the USB pins to metal, there's voltage across them even when the Raspberry Pi is off. Use the provided bolts to secure it to the base. Connect each pair of motors to the closest pair of outputs on the motor controller. The pair of motors on the top go into outputs 1 and 2 and the ones on the bottom go into outputs 3 and 4. The polarity for each doesn't matter, we'll be able to configure it later. Finally, plug the micro USB connector into the charging port of the UPS, making sure you're not accidentally plugging it into the Raspberry Pi. Now let's wire up the motor controller. If all goes well, we won't be unplugging these wires later, so feel free to use the wiring channel to keep the mess of wires under control. Follow the wiring diagram above. Connect the input pins and the enable pin to the Raspberry Pi, and the voltage and ground pins to the closest USB header. Remember, the top two pins are voltage and the bottom two are ground. When you are done, turn the Raspberry Pi on, wait for it to boot up, and then go to its web page. Press up and down, and make sure both pairs of motors are spinning forward and backward accordingly. If not, SSH into the Raspberry Pi, edit the configuration file, and swap the forward and reverse pins for either motor pair. Now that the motors are all hooked up, insert M3 nuts into each motor holder, and then into each hexagonal hole in the base. You can't see this clearly in the video, but there's really only one way to do it. Place the motor holders over the motors and screw them to the base using 12mm bolts. Next, we're going to assemble the headlights. Take the LED strip, expose the adhesive backing and attach it to the inner part, making sure the arrows on the strip are pointing away from the wiring slot. 
test fit it into the outer housing to make sure everything lines up, and then take the inner part back out. Now take two 10 cm and two 20 cm jumper wires, cut the plastic pieces off, and expose about 3 mm of bare wire. Solder 10 cm wires to the voltage and ground pads, and 20 cm wires to the data and clock pads by threading each wire through the opening near the pads of the LED strip. If you have a glue gun, I highly recommend putting some hot glue into the slot to provide some strain relief to the wires. You may want to write down or take a picture of your wires so you know which color corresponds to which pad. Now put the outer housing back on and put two 20mm bolts through the mounting holes. Gently push the four wires through the matching slot near the front of the base and then drive the bolts into the base to attach the headlight housing. Following the wiring diagram, attach the voltage and ground wires to the closest USB pins. Once again, top two are voltage, bottom two are ground. Thread the data and clock wires through the wiring channel and then attach them to the Raspberry Pi. Turn on the Raspberry Pi, wait for it to boot up and make sure you see the headlights light up. Let's assemble the camera bucket next. Take the camera body and the camera door and make sure the door fits into the slot. It should fit without much binding. Take the camera with the ribbon cable attached and put it into the camera body lining up its mounting holes with the plastic pins of the body, and then insert the door. Take the servo and use an X-Acto knife to lift the plastic tabs holding the connectors in place. Then take a few jumper wires and do the same so you have three individual plastic pin holders. Be careful not to bend the tab back too far or it won't hold onto the connectors. Push the three plastic pin holders onto the servo connectors. Now install the servo onto the back of the bucket and secure it with one of the longer screws that came with the servo. The next part involves placing the camera into the bucket on a swivel of a 6mm bolt and a spur gear. The gear should go into the matching slot on the side of the camera as shown here. You may also prime the hole in the camera using a bolt. Now place the camera into the bucket and connect the spur gear to it using a 12mm bolt. Use a 6mm bolt on the other side. Don't over tighten either of them, the camera needs to pivot freely. We need to make sure the servo is centered. This is the position it will always move to whenever you start Watney. Connect the orange pin to the Raspberry Pi GPIO pin and red and brown pins to 5V or ground either on the Raspberry Pi itself or one of the USB pins. Turn on your Watney, wait for it to boot up and you should hear the servo move through its range and to the neutral position. Shut down Watney and disconnect the servo. Take the servo spur gear and the servo horn shown here and trim the horn right after the second hole so it fits into the gear cutout. Now place the gear with the horn in the cutout onto the servo while holding the camera pointing forward. Remember, the servo is in the neutral position, so the camera should be as well. Take the other longer screw that came with the servo and use it to secure the spur gear to the servo. Prime the bucket mounting holes on the base so it will be easier to secure the bucket to the base. Roughly measure out how much wire you need to connect the servo to the USB header and to the Raspberry Pi, and shorten the wires to that length using a heat shrink or a zip tie. You don't strictly have to do that, but servo wire is really long and this will help keep it out of the way. Attach the servo wires as shown in the diagram, then place the bucket onto its mounting pillars and secure the bucket to the pillars using 12mm bolts. Attach the ribbon cable to the Raspberry Pi camera port. You'll need to gently move the wires out of the way 
but the wiring channel is flexible enough to let you do that without too much trouble. You'll also notice that the camera cable needs to be twisted 180 degrees to match the pin side of the port. Turn on your Watney and wait for the startup sequence. You can also access its webpage and make sure you're getting the video stream. By the way, this is the assembly area. This is where all this magic is happening. Alright, we're almost there. We'll be adding the microphone and the speaker next. Make sure you closely examine the pins on your microphone. In mind, the ground and the voltage pins are reversed as compared to the product picture. Start by placing the microphone into the housing and then use the clamp and two 6mm bolts to hold it in place. Then take the housing and attach it to the cover using two more 6mm bolts. Do the same for the speaker, but use 8mm bolts there. Use 20cm jumper wire to hook up the microphone to the Raspberry Pi and 10cm wire to hook up the amplifier. You'll need to splice two pairs of wires together, as you can see in the diagram. Hook up the speaker to the amplifier's output. You can temporarily unscrew the camera bucket to get better access. Start up your Watney one more time and make sure everything works okay, and then put the cover onto the base. You want to first make sure the camera gear is unobstructed and is properly inside the cover. Then tuck all the wires in, move the cover back, and with a satisfying Snap it in place. Use 6mm bolts to attach the cover to the base motor holders. Mount your tires onto the wheels as shown. This may require some finger strength. And then use the small notch on the wheel as a guide to line up and press fit the wheel onto the motor shaft. Take a moment here to admire your new Watney. Look how cute he is. We just made this little guy. Okay, now we just have to assemble the charging dock and we're done. Cut two pieces of wire of 55mm length each and strip the insulation on each end. Solder each wire to the bottom of a keystone connector as shown. Remember how we wired up the charging contacts on the rover? We just need to make sure the polarity of the charging dock matches the polarity of the connector. Thread the wires through each contact pillar. It helps to twist them as you push the wire through and push the keystone connector into place. Thread the wires back through the slot in the base and then solder them to the micro USB breakout connector. Then take the connector cover and secure it and the connector to the dock using two 8mm bolts. You may want to use double sided tape to secure the dock to a wall and thread the wire through one of the cutouts at the front of the dock. When parking Watney on the charging dock, hold the shift key while lining up the rover with the dock, drive into it until you see the charging indicator and then press forward without holding shift to make sure it is properly seated on the contacts. And that's it! Please let me know how your build went in the comments here or on my GitHub page, particularly if you're having any issues. And if you've enjoyed putting together your Watney, please post a picture. You can find instructions for that on my GitHub page as well.